Hi, Janice and everyone, welcome. Uh, I can't actually hear you, Janice, so I'm not sure what uh, you introduced, but I'm happy to be here. And shall I start talking about the pieces? Okay, so um, we, I just really feel fortunate to uh, be able to paint outdoors and experience um, the, the landscape in painting. It, uh, you connect with it that way and you can study and observe it and gain so much inspiration from nature. For me, it's about feeling uh, uh, basically a song played out uh, in my outings and and I call it lyrical expressions of the landscape where I um, add extra color. I do see these colors, especially um, in the evening and afternoon light, which I have found myself in um, after being outdoors all day. I do carry my paints with me and I can then at the end of the day paint what I experienced. And these were done on location um, at Colony Farms at the end of the day and the sun just last light before it uh, went away was beaming through the trees and I felt that was just a really lovely play um, to try to express. And then the grasses in front played all sorts of colors out that I put in with the different textures and brushwork. Uh, but my favorite is um, when whenever I go um, traveling, like this is Vancouver Island, and come across a surprise, like this cove I had no idea was there. It's a little uh, cove on, by Beacon Hill Park. Um, driving along that lovely coast and it was evening light again I, I saw a little picnic table I sat in and as the sun hit a certain point it it just had beautiful color across the water that was literally all sorts of different um, lovely warm tones pinks and oranges and I thought this is a painting I better get my paints out and so it took a little while to set up because I had to actually bring them back down to the beach from the car and um, set up as quickly as I could and, and the rocks started to silhouette and they were dark but there was color in them and if you look deep enough at these uh, both the lights areas and the and the deeper tones you'll see beautiful colors within them and that's what I try to express in the work and many of my paintings are done on Galliano Island where we have a family home and so it's a daily um, enjoyment to sketch or paint there and many of my works are actually um, expressions and emotional re responses to the landscape even though some are more representation like Colleen Farms or the sunsets which do look like that on Galliano sometimes but I do enjoy texture and working through a piece um, playing on opposites and including smooth and rough parts and expressions of joy and light as in this video that I filmed on YouTube um, that you can watch here and mostly um, I can say that even in muted light uh, like this day on Burnaby Mountain on a snow day where we couldn't do much else uh, but I decided to set up to paint and um, you you notice actually the colors become a little with more evident because everything is flattened but you can if you open your eyes wide you can see various color tones that I try to bring to life on my in in my panels um, and for instance this is called colors in the shadows because those nuances of color do play out. They're minute moments in time that you can heighten and put into the work and express as a joyful song. And, and that's what I hope to bring to the viewer that they feel a presence of something joyful and exuberant because that's what I feel outdoors uh, when I'm painting and that's what I enjoy sharing. And I, I attest that I'm sure all of us passionate outdoor painters feel a certain connection to the landscape and this is what we bring to our work and we can be passionate about it. So thank you, Janice. Thank for Thank you, Jane. Was I muted through that yes. whole opening section? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. my apologies. I, oh. I did a whole intro uh, to for everyone, and I was muted for the. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, well, we will just keep going. Just when you think you've got all the problems ironed out, you you discover you created a new one. <laughs> Um, so we will move on now and uh, we will be asking, um, uh, I'm going to get Janice Evans to unmute herself actually. 
There we go. And uh, Je Janice is a, a Nanaimo artist who's joined us uh, on as part of the Passion Outdoor Painters in this exhibition. Janice, would you like to um, introduce yourself and say a few words about your work? Certainly, thank you so much, Janice. Um, I am a passionate outdoor painter for sure. I paint almost every day. <laughs> it's a bit of an obsession like most of us. We, we love nature and we love to be outside. Um, I've traveled quite a bit and I always have my paints with me whether I'm in an airplane or on a beach or a forest or in another country, I think that's part of our whole uh, DNA as passionate painters. Um, this particular one, uh, Spring Marsh, <clears throat> it was done at an ecological marsh in um, Nanaimo. It's called Buttertubs March, Marsh. And I like to paint very loosely. I'm a watercolorist. Um, and I used quite large brushes, which is unusual, but um, I do love painting very loose and I use my body a lot to move when I am painting. This was done on a, on a lookout tower and at the time I didn't realize there was a cougar actually sleeping underneath it. <laughs> so, you know, you have to be careful when you're involved with painting because sometimes you forget about what's around you. Um, down below here, I, I'm on the Yangtze River in China pa painting. Um, I do a lot of minimalist uh, paintings now. I have a whole series called Haiku series, which I really like the white space. And that's kind of my signature now of, of painting with the white space because watercolorists normally don't use white. So I use the white of the paper. I don't use white. Uh, paint. I'm a bit of a traditionalist there. Um, and I mix all my own colors. Uh, I use a very minimal uh, three colors usually and I make all my own paints uh, hues from there. This one here, Tofino June, it's a very, um, you can see again the design is a very white space oriented design. Uh, the textures were first early, early in the morning. The sky was very, very flat. So it produced these beautiful, lush, green, deep, deep bank colors against that flat white sky. And um, when I was painting, I could almost feel, well, I could feel the, the salt from the ocean on my lips. You know, I, I'm a very uh, passionate person about the feel of paintings. Uh, not so much realism, but impressionistic and sometimes verging on abstraction. Uh, if you scroll down, Janice, to the uh, serendipitous summer harbor, which was done in the summertime, and you can see the same type of white space, uh, the delicate calligraphic marks in the back, and um, the play of the deep dark in the, the foreground corner against the very white, so the lights and the darks. It was a very hot, hot day, bringing silence and kind of heaviness, but there's a very light bright too. Um, the next one here, early morning light. I'm famous for painting early in the morning or later at night. Uh, my husband had to come and bring me my socks and shoes and a, and a sweater, but that one. <laughs> um, further down, um, if you keep going, I love mark making and this one is called Marking the West Coast. And I really have a passion about identity to the land. We all go away and we come back to our homes. And this is a piece um, coming back from the ferry and seeing the marks of the land and the excitement of being home are translated into those little dancing black marks that go across it. So that gives you a little idea of how I paint. Um, this is a long vertical again, a vertical piece. I like to work on very long verticals or very wide verticals. Another haiku. When clients buy these ones, I usually have a haiku poem to go with each painting too. Wow, that's really nice. <laughs> Um, thank you very much. And um, people can always read the, uh, the, you've included a little 
uh, explanation or story with each piece. So that's kind of nice. People can read that when they scroll through and look at your work. And um, I hope people are noticing that you can click on each piece. So even if it doesn't show on, if it's small in the image or doesn't uh, get too large to show when you scroll through, you can click on it and it will make it a, a, a better size for viewing. Our next artist up is Randy Green. And uh, Randy's not able to be here this evening. And once again, as with all the artists, you can click on their artist profile and read their biographies and their artist statements and find out a little more about them and how to contact them too. Um, so I'll give a brief introduction as we scroll through his work. Randy's an avid outdoors person. And he spends time um, fishing, kayaking, and skiing, as well as ex his excursions painting on location in all seasons. Uh, the walks in nature that he enjoy in nature that he enjoys often become his favorite places to paint, and he's known for capturing nature and wildlife with fine detail. Although Randy's been painting for more than thirty years. Painting on plein air is a relatively new addition to his art practice. Randy talks about this in uh, one of the videos that he's recorded and is in the digital gallery. And he also talks about uh, his plein air process and the stories behind the artwork. This particular video, he's telling the stories of the three pieces above. And um, it's kind of interesting to listen to uh, his, his inspirations and uh, little bits of uh, things about the, the location. And it's, it's just a very nice feel to have the videos too. Um, so Randy uh, notices a lot of details in every view he comes across. And uh, there's a story for this one, the Clutie Well tree. And uh, this piece is from, uh, is, pardon me. Daily, in this piece, he daily, he drives by this 120 year old heritage church and called, and the painting is called Inspired by the Light. Most of the time it's in the shadow of a large tree but in the right season for a very few days of the year, the angle of the morning sun highlights the weathered steeple, making it appear newly built. He, uh, the, the details are very important, light and dark, and the details are very important. And you can read more about that throughout his digital exhibition. Um, some of his pieces uh, like this one, and actually the, the two pieces, Chimney Rock and uh, Done Fishing, are uh, done on location at his uh, property near Pavilion Lake in the Marble Canyon near Pavilion Lake. And uh, he also paints locally and he uh, likes to go out in all weather. I believe in this particular one, he was with Jane Appleby up on Cypress Mountain and it was minus two degrees Celsius. And uh, like the quote says, he says it was like painting in a refrigerator and the paint wouldn't even dry. So I, I have to uh, give some credit to these plein air painters. They certainly don't let uh, anything stand in their way of, of getting, um, getting the uh, shot, <laughs> getting the painting. So our next artist this evening is Patricia Halley Sue. Um, Patricia, would you, I'll, I'll just uh, unmute you and, uh, okay. Now, would you like to introduce yourself, Patricia, and yeah. a bit about your work? I can, I think you wanted to talk about this piece, Girl in the Garden. Oh, correct, yes. But did you want to introduce yourself first? Yes. <laughs> My name is Patricia Haley Tsui. And um, to say the least, this is an unusual platform to be showing on. 
and it's a difficult platform to show through. But we appreciate everybody that came and everybody who's participating. And uh, thank you for being patient as we try to navigate this electronic world that we find ourselves in at the moment. Plein air, I like it because the, I like to paint in the natural light as opposed to the indoor light because it creates a unique atmosphere. And there are so many attractions in British Columbia, either rural or urban, where um, you can just set up and start to paint. And I feel nervous when I'm painting, but after the painting is finished, I feel relaxed. Um, like the painting of the girl is, uh, was done at um, UBC in the Asian Botanical Garden. It was done uh, October of last year in the fall when I went to the garden to see all the beautiful fall colors. And I was <clears throat> going to paint some trees and then it was at lunchtime and someone showed up and sat on a bench and her coat was as red as the maple leaves. So I tried to capture that, that feeling and it was a very sunny day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. Um, the, uh, okay, why is it not gonna go back? Sorry, I'm just, oh no. Hold on here, sorry. I, uh, I clicked the wrong thing and, and lost it. So I'm going to have to scroll through everything. I am so sorry, folks. Um, I also wanted to say that Patricia works in a wide variety of mediums, including oils, acrylic, and mixed media, and also uh, ceramics, photography, and textiles. She's well known for backcountry snow painting, paintings that have been used as Christmas cards for, uh, for groups like, uh, for snowboarding groups and others. And Patricia, for this uh, show, Patricia did two actual series of work for New Perspectives. Winter is long and is one series and summer is short is the other series. And once I get back there, we can look at it. Okay, sorry about that. Um, here we go. Okay, so this piece is part of the uh, Winter Long series and it was on uh, Burrard. She painted it from the south side of Burrard Inlet. And um, then she goes into uh, some more of her Winter is Long series. She's done some text to go with each one. And then she starts into her, um, uh, the summer is short. And doesn't it always feel like that? Um, so uh, we'll uh, scroll through her summer is short series done in mixed media. And uh, she was, I think they were all done now. Okay, sorry, I'm going to go back and look at the text here. I think they were all done in Barclay Heritage Square in the same location, she said, yes. So we will scroll through these and uh, they were obviously done last summer, <laughs> which is nice. A lot of planning goes into these plein air shows as uh, the artists do the work specifically for the shows. Um, and our next artist is Tatiana Merkov Popovsky. And um, I would like to uh, have Tatiana come on and uh, give a little introduction um, and for herself. And uh, we can um, talk about her artwork as well. Hi, everybody. Um, so I will tell you a little bit about this collection, which is in uh, this show. Uh, its name is Coastal Sentinels. So that's the latest thing that I'm working on. But going outdoors and painting Canadian landscape goes back to the first days when I came to Canada. Because I was born in former Yugoslavia in a place that was very different. 
We didn't have the ocean, we didn't have the mountains. So when I came here, I fell in love with the landscape and going outside and painting it is how I got to know this land. And I uh, always think of it as, as a good land. My, my previous collection was uh, named Good Land. So, um, so my work from the beginning to, to today um, reflects basically me learning about my new homeland, loving it, and uh, you know, trying to get some of that love back by uh, making those paintings and you know, sending it off into the world. Um, painting outdoors is so special uh, because you get immersed completely in the nature. And uh, for me, the patterns and the colors and the textures and also the scale of the nature are very important. And that's what I try, try to convey um, in my paintings. Um, so this painting that we're looking at, that's uh, one of the latest adventures that I took uh, last fall uh, when I went uh, with a group of painters to uh, Banfield area. So this is a Brady's, the famous Brady's Beach in Banfield in Berkeley Sound. Um, a really amazing place, wild beaches and, and really, really impressive. So this entire collection um, is, is the beaches. This is also a, a Brady's Beach in Banfield area. Um, so what's different with this latest body of work compared to, uh, to what I did before? Um, when I started painting, I was trying to get to know the land, trying to understand the patterns, the colors. So I was, I was really a focus um, on, on just uh, learning the shapes and just um, you know, conveying how I feel about it and how it feels to come to this land and suddenly see all these these beautiful places. And for me, I thought uh, that something like, like this didn't exist. It, it was really, really completely magical. But in this latest body of work, um, as I've been here for quite a while, for a quarter of a century now, um, there are different issues that are coming up. There's a, the, I'm starting to get worried about this landscape. There are concerns. Can we preserve these places? Um, it's more of a taking ownership uh, and trying to communicate that this is so precious. And if we don't take care of it, it's not gonna be there forever. It, it's magical, but uh, you know, we don't want that magic to disappear. Um, so that's more of, more of those emotions I'm trying to put in, in this latest body of work. Um, and the next thing, who knows, um, there's gonna be other adventures, um, but uh, it, it's all developing, it's all changing and it's kinda, um, what, what I produce is in sync with my feelings for, uh, for this land. Now, Tatiana, I know that you aren't able to state until the end when we will be um, having some questions. So could you tell me maybe about um, one of the most extreme locations that you've uh, painted in? Thank you for reminding me, Janice. I, I meant to mention it, uh, and, and I'm glad that you uh, you brought it up. Um, there were really some amazing um, uh, adventures um, going outside and painting. One of the biggest ones was uh, getting to uh, Bagabus Mountains in a per Purcell mountain range in um, Eastern British Columbia, um, where I also went with a group of painters and we had a helicopter uh, hired and every day the helicopter would take us to a couple of different spots um, and we would paint this magnificent landscape, the spires and the uh, pristine glacial lakes and so it was just incredible. Um, but the altitude was so high and so inaccessible. Uh, um, we actually had to be in the snow gear in August. And you know, during the one day there would be snow, there would be rain, there would be gusts of wind, and then suddenly the sunshine. So you kind of have to change your clothes two or three times during the day just to survive. But it's really a magical experience, and it lasts for uh, four days, and it's really a trip of a lifetime. Uh, that that would explain some of the photographs of you high in the mountains, then. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yes. Well, thank you. And um, I, like I said, I know you have a previous engagement and I certainly appreciate that you were able to come and spend um, the first half hour of the event with us. And uh, I uh, hope everyone will enjoy your work and every, they'll all get to hear about 
other extreme locations and interesting places that people have been to at the end of the event. So yes, I'm sure, sure that my uh, colleagues will be, uh, you know, able to really entertain and uh, uh, show their uh, masterpieces uh, to yeah. the public. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining in. <laughs> Thank you, Tatiana. I think we still have one last piece of yours to look at here, and this is a beautiful one. Um, Thank you. This is a healthy island in Berkeley Sound. Um, that's uh, from, from that latest trip that I mentioned. Yes, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. Our next artist is Sahar McCullough. Now, Sahar is unable to be here this evening, um, but I wanted to tell you a bit about her. Um, Sahar has lived in Coquitlam for close to 40 years, and her inspiration stems from her appreciation for nature with its color and moods. Her work reflects her love of the outdoors and she paints many of the views she finds locally as well as more remote areas in the Fraser Valley, the Rockies, Whistler and Mount Baker. Jane Appleby and Sahar McCullough have known each other for about 10 years. They sometimes paint together and often share stories of their other painting locations. I'm going to um, ask Jane if she would, uh, if Jane, would you like to tell us a bit more about Sahar and her plein air adventures and we can look at the rest of some of her artwork? Sure. Uh, I remember Sahar as exampling the ultimate passionate outdoor painter because she always had a sketchbook with her, watercolors, pens, pencils. We talked about various materials and, uh, she has a scientific background, so she mentioned on the, the benefits of different media and, and how to apply paint. And I was just intrigued that uh, how much uh, passion she had for daily expressions in whatever she felt like working in. And she even came to Galliano uh, painting with me and she was the first one up at 6 a.m. and she was, we're all here having breakfast and she's painting the sunrise. So it was an inspiration to um, really pick up the pace uh, for trying to get uh, work done whenever you see something inspirational. And, and she notes these things quite in a lovely way with abstraction, which we also had great discussions about simplifying scenes and compositions. So it's not all about just trying to render something realistically. She, I remember you know, her feeling about the application of paint being important and and how it moves you and where your eye goes. So um, I believe that I learned a lot from Sahar and remember a trip where we went down um, the from Harrison Lake to Kilby uh, on uh, canoes and kayaks and we stopped to paint and it was a, a lovely way to set up uh, simple uh, materials because we had to carry them with us and she had done this yearly, so I was pleased to be invited on this trip and uh, we were able to paint all sorts of different scenes and I know she's uh, very good at painting, whether it's uh, landscapes, people, animals, she really tries to, you know, have a sense of how it touched her and what story it might be telling and, and you can go into the work and appreciate it uh, more for various nuances. And even just simple compositions of flowers up here in, um, I think it's Colony farm where we also painted um she you know expresses the the marks with um loose brush and and quick renditions that are so playful and and she's a she's quite a lovely person that way too um joyful to to be around and and paint with and it's interesting when we do paint we're actually quite silent we're in our own uh worlds uh, maybe really responding to the surroundings and our painting but it's really nice to have somebody along not only for the safety aspect but to share our pictures later and and just smile and say a job well done so i i do always appreciate sahara's dedication and i'm glad she's part of the show this is how i feel about her work 
Um, Jane, you actually mentioned something earlier about, um, because some of uh, Sahar's paintings are in rather extreme locations. Yeah. And uh, how is it that she's going out into these locations? You had that's mentioned right. that. That's right. Her husband's an avid hiker and he often, they go to these lovely mountainous areas and iconic um, locations where hikers go and, and her husband hikes and she paints. She always has her paints long as she'd prefer to, you know, uh, sit herself down in, in some uh, spot and even by herself uh, remains there all day painting uh, away till they return and I think that's a, a good way to <laughs> collaborate a, a, an outing, an adventurous outing, although she does hike too a little bit but I think she prefers to paint. It's, she says it's what she loves to do. Thank you very much Jane. Yeah, thanks. Um, so now we are going to move on to our next artist, uh, Frank Hopefully, and I may have said that wrong. Let's just ask him here. Uh, let me unmute. I'm having some unmute issues here. Oh, no. How about there, now? I've, I've got, okay. So uh, did I say it wrong, Frank? No, I think you said it 95% uh, of the people say it the same way as you do. <laughs> So you didn't say. saying that it was right either. Yeah. <laughs> um, so do you want to introduce yourself, please say a little bit, give us some sure. information um, and yeah, sure. Um uh, I'm I'm an avid painter, but I've I've uh, been painting for about 20 years or 25 years, but um I'm new to the uh uh, plein air style of painting, taking your stuff out and uh, and painting, you know, on the spot. Um, it's 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 fun. It's a it's a it's it's a challenge, and uh, um, I find it. I'm a fair weather painter, and anywhere I can drive my car to, I will paint. Uh, I'm not an avid hiker, so I just don't go all the way up with all this stuff. But um, I do. Uh, I have a loose style of painting. I I work with oils. Um, mostly just get inspired morally by shapes, uh, as opposed to color. So I could honestly sit on a beach like I am there, um, and look at the, it could be a beautiful blue sky, sunny day, but my painting will be dark and with different, completely different colors, but at times. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's part of what this, this painting here is, is from, uh, 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 Rebecca Spit. It's a beautiful place on Quadra Island with lots of driftwood. It has more driftwood than sand on the beaches. And in some cases, if you can see, I do leave a little bit of a signature of, of um, like a face, a native style. If you, you you can't really see it in this, but it's in the corner um, on the yeah left hand side top. I sometimes leave little faces and images on my paintings when I'm I'm doing. It. it depends how I feel that day, but um, sometimes I do that. So it's hidden. It's a lot of times it's hidden. But uh, this was uh, yeah, Quadra Island, and and uh, most of the time I spend uh, painting uh, at Galliano, um, and these are mostly paintings that I did in Galliano. Um, and uh, again, I I start with a canvas like this one particular one here. I'll I'll sketch out pretty quickly. Most of the painting, about 80% of it will be done in, on the spot and then details will be done later. But I have to blend each. Uh, most of my brush strokes are curved and long and I blend them together uh, with the paints. Um, so I have to have the canvas wet uh, all the time before I finish it. So it's rarely, um, only with details I'll do uh, stages, but it's pretty much done um, at one sitting. Sometimes that sitting could be a long time, but yeah. And that's Sandstone Beach, that's in Galliano. And same with this, this is a, a special spot on Galliano uh, with these trees and, the, and uh, overlooking the Selish Sea. Um, again, that's completely different than what I was looking at that day, but it just, whatever comes to me at the time and and whatever looks good with with the eye, but it's it's more therapeutic than anything else that, as I go on painting. Uh, this is one of my favorite parks. It's White Cliff. Uh, that's the most recent painting I've done, and um, I really enjoy that park. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to put a, a little different spin on it. That's for sure. 
Well, thank you, Frank. I appreciate you um, telling us about your work and we'll get into some more questions at the end of this when everybody's on together. Thank you. Um, Thanks. <laughs> I would like to introduce Alison White now. Um, Alison is, uh, I'd like to give her a warm welcome. She's a longtime Port Moody resident, and uh, she's also a member of the Blackberry Artist Society that operates the gift shop at Pomo Arts. So, Alison, welcome this evening and uh, would you like to introduce yourself and then we can talk about some of your artwork. Yes, hi Janice, thanks for the introduction. Yes, I do get to see you lots and it's always a pleasure. Um, I'm not able to pull up any of my artwork on my iPad here. Um, so I'm not sure what order you're going to be going through, but my, um, my painting is, uh, outdoor painting that Jane Appleby introduced me to uh, 10, probably about 10 years ago. And she's dragged me a lot of places and I have loved every minute of it. And I have now uh, in the last few years been an avid plein air painter. Um, the way I get around is a little different. It's not like Frank on his bike or in a kayak. I have a little bicycle with a basket and I put my canvases in it, usually probably one, and I put my, um, my palette in there and my brushes and I go off cycling and there are just so many beautiful places to cycle in our area. I go to Colony Farm and there are just some very delightful little spots that you would never think you just walk past or you don't even get there because you're on foot. Um, but on a cycle, on a bicycle, you can really move around. So Colony Farm is one of my favorites. Um, um, the Coquitlam River is always a place with lots of um, artistic um, spots to sit down and paint, especially if there's a river and a bridge, which I do like to do. Dubuville Slough over by Minicata, another great spot to cycle and paint. Now, I don't know what's on the screen, so I can't really tell you anything, Janice, but if you could pull up Imperial Creek, that's in Ioko. I don't know if that will be on the screen. Yeah, that, it's on now. It's is it? on yes. now. Oh, oh thanks. Yeah. That was rather an exciting spot to paint because I had to sit on the very edge of the ravine and um, it was a little tricky not sliding down into the ravine because I wanted to capture the creek down below. The bridge in the background connected the two Ioko town sites so that people could go from one to the other. And that bridge is still green. I know it looks an unusual green, but it is still green. Um, if you go to the very last painting, I think it's the barn, but I, I can't tell. Janice is a- is Yeah, the barn. Um, I'll get, I'll, yes, here I am. I'm at the last one, Polaris yeah. Barn. Polaris's barn, that's up in Anmore where I kept my horse, spent many, many hours up there. And I sat down on the brick driveway. I wanted to capture the, the barn which, uh, where my horse was, which had very emotional attachment uh, to me. And I just wanted to just capture that barn with the uh, wheelbarrow just hiding inside and, and the barrels outside. Um, it's a very important painting and one that uh, meant a lot to me. So I don't know what else you've got up there, Janice. Uh, you've done Imperial Creek in the barn. Noons Creek, that's a, a very uh, interesting place to sit and paint because you're, you know, practically falling into the water constantly, but so yes. Two paintings of Noons Creek. Two paint, yes, I, I go there quite frequently and sit and paint. It, it's a very restful place. The uh, shadows, you can uh, see different darks and lights and the greens, 
and the water, trying to capture the flowing water. So yeah, it's a, one of my favorite spots. Um, can you see Washington Trail? It's uh, it's another uh, yes. It's in the middle. Washington yeah. Trail is a place quite close to me where I walk frequently, park my bike at the top, and walk down the trail. I have met bear in that bears in that area, so we always have to be careful. But again, lots of beautiful greens and the trees, the moss, the trail. So we have so many places in our area in the, uh, the lower mainland and, and in Port Moody to paint. And Jane, I want to thank you again for being part of this show. And to everyone else in the show, Frank and Patricia and Janice for all your help. And both Janices, Janice uh, over in Nanaimo, thank you for your help. And of course, Janice Cotter, you did a great job. So thank you again. Thank you, Allison. Um, so now, uh, before we go back to the, we'll go to gallery mode and we'll talk to the artists. I just wanted to say that um, I, I, I think I was muted at the beginning when I said this exhibition was in progress for uh, over two years ago, we started talking about the potential to do another uh, Passion Outdoor Painters exhibition. And uh, Jane Appleby and, and Randy Green were at the forefront in um, organizing it. And it was intended to be installed at Homo Arts in our gallery in June and uh, was delayed just a little bit and we transferred it to a, a digital exhibition. So as I mentioned earlier that you couldn't hear, I'm, I'm very gra grateful to the artists for uh, trusting us, trusting me in the transition to presenting their artwork in a new format. Now, if you are interested in finding out more about the artists or their artwork or making a, a purchase of artwork to support our local arts community, you can call the artists directly. Um, there's contact information for them in, on their artist profile in the artist directory. And if you would like to support, support POMO Arts, um, the artist profile page is one of the benefits of purchasing a Pomo Arts membership. So now I am going to go back to a gallery mode and we will all, let's unmute everybody. And uh, um, yes, if you're not unmuted, let's try and unmute you. <laughs> And then we can uh, talk a little bit about our um, the, some of the questions. I think one of the things that I find that is so interesting, actually, Patricia, I'm going to mute you again because I think we have some sound issues from your phone. Um, and we'll I'll unmute you if when you want to get involved in the conversation. Um, so one of the things I find incredibly interesting about plein air painting is that these artists are just so intrepid. They, they put up with bears and cougars and coyotes and the snow and the ice and freezing feet and uh, uh, <laughs> riding their bikes all over and I don't know, I, I climbing glaciers and uh, I think it's so incredible, um, the dedication. It, passionate doesn't begin to describe how these plein air painters go about their work. So I would like to maybe start with Jane and have you tell us about either your most interesting or your most extreme location or condition that you've ever painted in. I know you ski, you spend so much time up in the mountains in the winter. Um, what's the most extreme painting condition you've been in? I would say the cold, I mean, 
Oh, you froze. Oh no. It gets windy too. And is it the internet or can you see? You're, can you you, okay, try again. You were frozen there for a moment. Okay. Uh, definitely, uh, there are situations where you find yourself in uh, very cold or windy situations where things can be blown away and uh, into down cliffs and things. Um, but I would say the minus two at Cyprus was tough. You couldn't even close the box <laughs> with the frozen hands at uh, a couple of hours in. Because you get involved in your painting, you lose track of time, and then you realize as the sun goes down after three and or, or so there um, behind the mountain, it it drops 10 degrees and, and you, you feel it. But, you know, we're not too far away from the car, so that was fine but also Blackcomb was a lovely spot to paint in after skiing I decided to put a backpack on and ski back up and and put myself right on the side of the run and and paint the mountains there and and that got uh, as cold as well and the wind chill made it a little difficult um, but you know you start a painting and you, and you feel that uh, cold and you put it into your work it's kind of a nice expression that can be included so part of the adventure of the um experience ends up in the work in lively brushwork and and color so you know it's part of the process <laughs> thank you jane um janice i'm going to move on to you and ask you if you've had any uh, anything you would consider extreme or exotic the weather conditions or locations and uh tell us about it well a couple of years ago i was uh, painting in provence france and I was up in the mountains and I decided I'd uh, go for a hike early in the morning, packing my plein air stuff, traveled up this very narrow pathway to the top of this area and was painting away and all of a sudden the clouds and the storm started to move right in. And uh, I wasn't quite sure where I was at that point. <laughs> Luckily, my husband had decided to come and rescue me and moved up the mountain. And he looked at me on the top of the mountain. He says, oh, my goodness, Janice, do you realize what you're standing next to? And I said, no, I thought it was a flagpole. Well, it was a lightning rod. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was pretty crazy <laughs> kind of things that you get yourself into without even noticing. Um, now, you also went on a cruise um, in Asia, China, I believe. Yeah, yes, um, I went there because I actually had met a couple of Chinese artists here. Um, it's a bit of a story. Um, her, this woman that I'm in contact with in China in Beijing is a, a really good friend now. And she came to stay with me for about a week. I didn't know her, she didn't know me, but she, her sister invited her to come and stay with me. <laughs> and it was a lovely experience. So then I went to China and visited with them. And I, my husband and I went on a cruise up the Yangtze. So we had a little balcony and I could plein air paint there, as well as when we went off the cruise ship, I could go and paint in the areas. Um, the Yellow Mountains are very famous over there. Um, so I got lots of sketching done and it was wonderful, just wonderful. But Thank you. Oh, it's, sorry. It's amazing when you're a plein air painter, you get to meet uh, so many other people. And if you're open to talking to people when you're painting, it, it's, an, it's a wonder because you can meet so many people from all over the world. When I'm on the ferry, and I paint on the ferry all the time. I've been, for the last 10 years, I give away a painting. If I hear somebody that I, I feel that's from another country, I've got paintings all over the place that I've given away. And it's, it's really a lovely thing to do when you're, when you're a painter. It's really cool. Thank you, Thank you Janice. I, I, it's interesting with both of us having the same name. I'm never quite sure if the, if the artists were talking to you earlier or whether they were talking to me. Um, so now I'm going to move on to uh, Patricia and I'm unmuting you, Patricia, and I'm going to see, have you had any um, exotic experiences in your, um, in your uh, plein air painting, uh, Patricia? Yes, yes. Um, 
Well, I did my series of uh, Summer is Short at the Barclay Heritage Square in uh, Vancouver. And being a heritage park, the whole park is filled with heritage plants. So when you're doing plein air outside, there's every insect imaginable that um, likes to be your friend. And it could be mosquitoes and bees and wasps and crawly insects. So that's my story. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. Um, I think we're going to move on to uh, Frank next. Now, Frank, I understand uh, that you ride your bike around when you do a lot of your work. Do you, do you, do you <laughs> no, travel? I don't. <laughs> that's what that's who did I hear say that? Uh, okay. I think Allison said that, but I, I, I didn't say that. Sorry. But no, I, oh. I'm far from riding a bike. Yeah. But, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Now, but you do travel. Um, Motorcycle. Travel? Yeah. Okay. Pardon me? But anyways, I do travel. Yes, I do travel. Um, but I, I, I honestly, like I said, I'm new to plein air. So I, I really, I've traveled all around the world. But uh, um, luckily, um, but uh, I've never, I've mostly just done photography and, and painted, you know, the, the, the photos I take. But um, when I'm new to plein air, I have a little comfort zone at Galliano, but I'm not overly comfortable going out necessarily in public uh, because uh, I, with me, I, I just get into a zone. Uh, I, when I'm painting, uh, it, uh, I get into a zone where I, I'm, I know where I'm going with the paintbrush. I know where I'm going with the colors. And if I get interrupted, I forget where I was going to go. And, and then I have to start over kind of thing. So it depends what I'm doing, uh, you know, cause I do abstracts and I do, I do um, impressionistic. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit of getting used to at this point. I'll just say that. So you still have some adventures ahead of you in your plein air career. I would say Jane's going to probably drag me out somewhere and uh, yeah, <laughs> with tigers and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> She seems to be pretty good at that, at dragging a lot of people out yeah. into these adventurous <laughs> conditions. Yes, <laughs> for sure. Um, I am going to move on to Allison now. Now I know you said you ride your bike. So um, do you, have you done um, any traveling, plein air painting while you're traveling or what would you say was your most exciting plein air experience? Well, I did have one experience, which, and I have not got any example here to show you, but we were in India on a little train up in the hills, and I had my crayons, my, um, uh, my notebook and my crayons, and little did we realize that the monkeys are very prevalent there, and they just hop into the train through the open windows, and they take anything they can find. And I lost my little notebook and I lost my crayon. So that was my adventure in India. So, but it wasn't on my, on my bike for sure. Now you, uh, as I remember, there were several of the Passion Outdoor painters involved in the uh, Belcara project a few years ago, Jane, Randy, and you, I know and spent quite a bit of time um, painting uh, the Belcara cottages um, when they were uh, to document them in case yeah. they were torn down. That, that is very correct. Jane and I spent quite a bit of time up there and we even presented to Metro Van to try and save the cottages. Yes, we, Jane, we had quite an exciting time up at uh, uh, the cottages, didn't we, Jane? Yes, it was a great place to try to different subject matter. I hadn't usually um, painted buildings, but the, the beauty of them you you started to see in in their um, simplicity and and the, the, the way that they could be painted. You realize they had sort of character that uh, was very inspirational. And the people there, they, they live simply and they take care of the community. And I found that really inspirational. And I, I really enjoyed being in that location to paint. It was quiet and um, was really a, a, a nice way to 
to bring life to to a community that possibly could be dying and that's how it felt when we were painting it so thank you um well our hour is almost up and um since i didn't uh, the uh, information I read at the beginning, I was on mute. I'm just going to take this uh, moment to say that um, I'd like to, uh, every, for everyone at Port Moody Arts Center, Pomo Arts, that we would like to express our gratitude uh, to the hard work and dedicated people that are on our board of directors. It, uh, really makes a difference when you're a, a society to have a wonderful board of directors, as well as to say how thankful we are for the financial support of the government of Canada, the province of British Columbia, and the city of Port Moody. Especially at this time, um, it is really important for us to be able to keep going and supporting our artists, artistic community and to have the support of all these levels of government has um, just made it possible for us to do that. So um, I'd like to thank our artists this evening, um, the Passion Outdoor Painters and congratulate them on their exhibition, New Perspectives, which is on our website. And um, this uh, uh, exhibition will be, you can scroll through it live and uh, check out the work and contact the artists. And next week, um, we will have uh, a guest moderator, Caitlin Hill, and she will be discussing how COVID-9 has impacted the performing arts sector. sector. She'll be joined by Peter Abando, Paige Fraser, and Linnea Antios to discuss the future of live theater during and after the pandemic. So at this point to our uh, guests, I would like to say thank you very much for coming and we'll be back again next week. Good night. Good night.